So fatigue, um, I think it's really important to differentiate stages of fatigue. You know, there's the obvious, uh, I feel tired because I stayed up really late last night and I had to wake up early. This is more of a uh, short-term fatigue that is pretty straightforward and obvious in that you just simply didn't get enough sleep that night. When we're speaking of more of a chronic fatigue type situation, this is a, a constant, heavy, dragging physical and psychological exhaustion that simply does not let up. Um, someone feels tired all the time and it's not exactly uh, easily cause and effect to, for them to be aware of. It's not like, oh, I stayed up till two o'clock in the morning and had to wake up at five to go to work. It's I still got a decent night's sleep and I'm still tired all the time. And you have to understand the state of someone that is going to call the doctor, make an appointment, drive all the way across town to go to that appointment and sit there and talk to them because they are tired all the time. This is significant. Um, this is not just the, the whiny complaining, oh, I'm tired all the time. This is, you know, it's affecting work performance, it's affecting family life, it's affecting psychological and emotional health. Um, you have to understand this, the, what's going on within someone to get them to the point where they're sitting in front of you or a doctor to talk about their fatigue. So why do we get fatigued? How does our cultural model tend to support fatigue? And how does our lifestyle generate fatigue? And most importantly, what can we do about it? So first, let's talk about some of the obvious causes of fatigue. The first one is, again, these are obvious, would be lack of sleep. Now, oftentimes when people talk about sleep, it's really spoken of quantitatively, i.e. how many hours of sleep did you get? While that can be something to consider, I think a more important question is the quality of sleep. Um, specifically, is someone getting into those deeper stages of sleep that provide the physiologically restorative quality uh, that sleep provides for especially the neuroendocrine system. And fatigue that is, you know, a one-shot fatigue because you didn't get enough sleep typically is simply remedied by, you know, getting some sleep. Um, but uh, but when we have more of this long-standing chronic fatigue, you know, sometimes people can get a little lack of sleep here and there, and it's not that big of a deal. But what we see culturally is that it's very common for people on average to be getting not only low quantity of sleep, but low quality of sleep. They're being frequently woken up through the night. They um, don't drop into those deeper states of restorative sleep. So even if they get seven or eight hours of sleep, they're not getting deep enough and they're still waking up uh, very fatigued and not feeling well rested, which when you're doing an intake for someone on fatigue, doing a, a very deep dive um, investigation of not just quantity, but quality of sleep is very important. And one of the most important questions there is actually, do you wake up feeling well rested? Um, and if the answer to that question is a consistent no, um, then that is something that absolutely needs to be looked into. Second, we have constantly pushing oneself beyond uh, capacity. So this can take the form of athletes very commonly do this. Uh, they push themselves beyond their physiological capacity towards exhaustion. This can be very hard on the neuroendocrine system over prolonged periods of time. This also has to do with chronic stress. So if you are constantly in a sympathetic state of your autonomic nervous system, this is very exhausting to, on a physiological level, I'm not just saying, oh, I feel tired, but literally on a physiological level in the body, it's very, very depleting. Uh, people talk about, 
you know, aging, well, one thing that is gonna make you age quickly is chronic stress. Um, you, your whole endocrine system, the whole functioning of the sympathoadrenal system, which is where your sympathetic nervous system and the uh, adrenal aspect of the endocrine system kind of link together. When that becomes it's excessive, it is very, very depleting for the body on multiple levels. So the chronic stress piece is very important and it's contributing factor to chronic fatigue. We would also see associated with that is immune deficiency because when people tend to have chronic stress, chronic sleep um, issues, we see that the immune function is decreased. And from an astrological medicine perspective, this is all the axis of Mars. Mars governs the stress response, the sympathoadrenal system, and also the immune system. When one is in excess, the other is in deficiency and vice versa. When that stress response um, becomes more moderated, um, then our immune function tends to be heightened and much more efficient. And lastly, you know, I'm saying obvious causes of fatigue. This one is not as obvious to most people, but this is critically, critically important for the fatigued patient. If we think of energy, right? With, with fatigue, everyone always says, oh, my adrenals are burned out. My adrenals are burned out. It must be my adrenals. Um, a lot of time it's not your adrenals. <laughs> your adrenals are not what give you energy on a consistent basis. Sure, they give you those bursts of energy under periods of stress through secreting, you know, adrenaline and noradrenaline and cortisol and all of that. But if you think of it on a cellular level, what generates energy is the mitochondria. And that is the generation of ATP, adenosine triphosphate. This is cellular energy. This is what literally every cell in your body uses as its primary energy source. And it is manufactured through a biochemical cycle called the Krebs cycle. And when we look at the biochemistry of the Krebs cycle, we see that there are fundamental uh, enzymes and intermediates that are required for that cycle to effectively generate adequate amounts of ATP to maintain your energy levels. And if you look at those, we find critical nutrients such as magnesium, one of the primary minerals that is devoid in must, mu much of the modern human diet because of the soil being depleted of magnesium. This is what technically classifies a B vitamin. So a lot of our B vitamins are Krebs cycle intermediates, along with many amino acids, which are derived from protein. So if you couple magnesium deficiency with B vitamin deficiency, with insufficient protein in the diet, we will have deficient Krebs cycle intermediates, which affects mitochondrial health, which affects energy levels. And I don't care how much ashwagandha, eleuthero, rhodiola, Asian ginseng you take, if you are deficient in the fundamental nutrients that are responsible for making that Krebs cycle hum along smoothly and efficiently, you will ultimately not correct the underlying pathophysiology of fatigue, which is multifactorial, but the nutrition is critical here. So this is an important point in addressing fatigue that I think it's very easy for the modern herbalist to overlook because we get, we hear fatigue and our mind immediately goes to adaptogens. Don't think that way. You will miss the mark many times. Um, so that's, these are some of the obvious aspects of fatigue. And notice none of those really equals adaptogen deficiency, right? Um, oftentimes we can correct fatigue simply by aiding someone in getting deeper restorative sleep and getting them optimally nourished. That is the foundation for addressing fatigue, um, not just 
offhandedly throwing crazy strong adaptogen formulas at people all the time. Now I'm not saying adaptogens don't have their place. Obviously that's what I'm going to be talking about here, but I, I feel like in order to talk about adaptogens and their use in fatigue, it's very important to talk about some of these underlying factors, which are really central to a holistic and vitalist approach to herbal medicine. Now, the other thing that I want to say is that fatigue's not always just fatigue. Fatigue can be a sign or a symptom of sometimes much more serious um, uh, illness that, that people are experiencing. So for example, people with cancer tend to be very fatigued. People with chronic systemic inflammation tend to be fatigued. People with autoimmunity tend to be fatigued. People with immunodeficiency, or what sometimes is called CFIDS, chronic fatigue immunodeficiency syndrome. Post-viral syndrome can generate fatigue. Heck, food intolerance can generate fatigue. So this is another reason why we can't just give the fatigued patient adaptogens right off the bat. Sometimes we need to investigate things more deeply. Sometimes we need to refer them to get further screening and testing done to make sure that there isn't something much deeper going on with the client whose primary complaint is fatigue. So you can't just give adaptogens. You have to assess the diet, the lifestyle, nutritional factors, and make sure there isn't something more serious going on for your fatigue clients. And you really have to be rational and logistical in your approach uh, in the sense of like be logical in thinking about these underlying contributing factors.